Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Sandy. I am honored to have you again on the OG Rose Spotify podcast. It's always a joy to speak with you, my, my love. And thank you for your time. And um, I'm excited to di- dive into the motherhood and identity topic with you. But again, thanks for being here. Hi, Michelle. Thank you so much for having me. It's always wonderful to talk to you and Daniel about all things <laughs> and I know that, you know, motherhood is something you and I have talked about so many times in the past, and I'm so happy to be talking about motherhood and, you know, the sense of identity, and thank you for having me. Yeah, of course, of course. It's, uh, it is truly always a delight. We could talk for hours, you know that. (laughs) Yes. Um, so I, I, I love the quote you said my way by Kierkegaard. You know, I really have been meditating on it because it was so fascinating. And I'm not going to remember the exact words, but he was talking about the fact that most loss in our lives is quite noticeable, right? Like if somebody lo- loses some fingers or they lose, you know, a loved one, like they know every, it's very obvious, right? Like there's no way to deny this happened, right? But, um, yes. you know, I think like, um, you know, it, so yeah, the, the idea of losing somebody in death or losing, uh, a, a, he, I think he said an arm in the quote, these things again are quite obvious, but the one that's not obvious is is losing, um, losing oneself, right? Losing the sense of self. And now it might be obvious to, to those who know the person quite well, um, but it it might be obvious to the person themselves, but maybe not because it can be kind of a slow, gradual process potentially, right? And I I thought that was fascinating because it also made me think of this talk that I was listening to uh, by Daniel and um, Aspasia and Johannes. They're talking about like. Uh, therapy and diff- different things like this but but one of the things Espacio was talking about was how do you get like things really clear on you know basically how how, how do you know when it's like um, can you ever get to like the absolute like clear place where you have that that deep sense of self without it being tainted by you know what the society might craft for oneself or what this crafts for oneself and I and the thing is, people change too. So, of course, somebody might not seem like themselves if they're in a totally different new role of their lives. Um, does that mean like they're not being true to themselves or does that just mean that they now are in a different season? Right. So it's, it's a lot to consider. And I think especially in light of motherhood, it's um, it's an important topic and, and one that, you know, I think I, I, I love to meditate upon. So, yeah. What are your thoughts, Gurley? Oh, I think that's such a wonderful point. You know, when I sent you that quote, I don't have the exact quote right now in front of me, but uh, pretty much to sum it up to the listeners, Kierkegaard says that sense of loss is often materialistic or something tangible like a finger or five dollars or a loss of person versus the sense of identity or something that's abstract that you can't necessarily hold on to, but it's present and it's loss is something that you don't have time to grieve because the person itself takes some time to come into realization that there has been a transition within, within oneself. Mm -hmm. And I think motherhood is such a fine example of that because oftentimes you know, whether they're first time mothers or second time mothers or just mothers in general, a lot of people tend to ask how things are physically because of, you know, the whole process of giving birth and, you know, bringing life to this world. But there is, you know, this huge transition between bringing that life to this world and embracing your life in a whole new way Mm -hmm. that, Mm -hmm is happening physically because you have this small human being that now depends on you to be kept alive and nurtured for a long time but also what about you because you are battling between your physique your heart and your mind Mm -hmm. to embrace in a way the death of self because the moment you're a mother you become purely selfless and that is required of you to become selfless but Humans are innately selfish beings and we have to come into terms with our new life, you know, our new routine, our new rhythm that, you know, this tiny little precious thing counts in us around the clock as their primary source of attachment to be there for, to be cared, to be, you know, pretty much attended to all the time. And I think what really fascinates me is I've been reflecting upon this a lot in, in terms of the sense of identity, like... As a woman, you know, the Bible tells us to leave and cleave towards our husbands when we get married. So there is the transition from being a girl to a woman and then a woman to a wife and then a wife to a mother. Mm -hmm. And 
that transition is very psychological more than it is physical hmm. because you have to develop the sense of maturity that requires you to be selfless you you go from being one to two and then two to three and it just keeps increasing and the dynamic keeps changing but i think a lot of people are intimidated even mothers themselves are very intimidated by the change they feel mentally because i don't think there is enough freedom in the society we live in for us to feel those things and to be said that it's natural to feel guilt it's natural to feel ashamed it's natural to feel clueless it's natural to want help and to be told that you know you're doing a great job and it's okay to not be okay because there is a sense of pressure you know that you know what you see on social media versus what is real and what your own experiences i mean you know when we talk about motherhood and embracing motherhood everyone's birth story is different every everyone's child is different right but one thing we can all have in common as women and as mothers is our emotional capacity to be selfless in our endeavors and in our vocation as a mother right but i feel like when it comes to identity we don't give mothers or ourselves enough grace to say that this is how i'm feeling and i need to acknowledge the way i'm feeling and meditate on it and reflect on it and if it's a feeling that's too heavy on my heart i'm going to talk about it or seek some sort of help and uh, without making it seem invalid i mean i think you know when when i talk about identity or when i think about identity as humans we're constantly evolving there's no one way to be i mean the way we were yesterday will not be the way we are this morning or you know after this conversation tomorrow we are full of revelations and reflections and age providing wisdom but i think one thing that we can acknowledge is that the sense of identity is never constant but you are thoroughly challenged in your vocation as a mother because there is a enough room for you to meditate on your feelings and how you feel and who you are yeah. what do you think about that do you think yeah. do you think there's a loss of space because mm. yes right the, uh, space and identity go very hand in hand mm. to me would mm. you say there is a loss of space that does not give mothers enough time between being a mother and a wife to come and check in on themselves mm. yeah no, that's all really good, Sandy. And I think there's also this interesting thing that we might see today where, you know, there's always like the extremes, right? Where there's the, you know, oh, it's because you're being selfless that you should really never be thinking at all about that sort of inner sense of, wow, I really need um, help or I'm feeling very alone or whatever it is, right? Um, yeah. Or there's the opposite side where it's like, you know, constantly sort of um, almost having an entitled spirit to help and you know oh this just viewing motherhood is always hard and like this kind of um you know uh labor and and almost problematizing it when really it's like it, the nature of it is to be um challenging but also incredibly rewarding so we you know we, it's almost like you don't um there, there's kind of that being able to be in touch with the reality of motherhood which is both of the the incredible joy and the challenge of it but where does that leave the, the self right because if it if it is um naturally a selfless vocation in a sense right um then it's very it's very difficult to to come to terms with how much like because um and just and it just also really depends on who the person is and what their like kind of propensities are in that dynamic but i mean i think it's again like you said it's, it's important that a mother be selfless actually that she really does think about taking care um of her children and providing them with the the attention that they need right but you know it's 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 very kind of you know, trite and, and sort of a an, um, colloquial kind of, not colloquial, but um, it's more like, you know, it's just the old expression, right? Where like, you can't fill up somebody else's cup if your cup is not filled, right? But how right. does it, you know, there's a sense in which, well, okay, for some, and I don't know if it's just the fact that our brains can tend to be very all or nothing, right? It's just like, it's simple. If I just make it all about self-sacrifice, I won't have to think too hard about this. <laughs> so maybe right. what can happen is that the mind sometimes either does the opposites, right? Like there can be unfortunate situations where people, 
it's easier for them to just live for themselves, even if they have a family, you know, this is very, very detrimental, right? Um, but it's a little yeah. bit more overtly detrimental, right? To the Kierkegaard quote, he's saying that it's very, it's not obvious to see when maybe somebody is within the context of doing what they should be doing, which is the self-sacrificing, mm -hmm. in the sense of like, giving of themselves fully and to their children, providing for their needs, um, but also not like neglecting that self that is there, that is the whole reason for the genesis, it's a participation in the genesis of these new human beings, little lives, and that that person also, like somehow in being able to still, um, I want to say attend to that child within yourself, right, that that is still a type of child to attend to as well, right, so that you can attend to your physical children, your, 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 bi your biological children in a way that, or like, you know, a biological adoption or otherwise, right? Like that you can attend to those children that you're caring for um, in a way that is like fully present and, and to the, to the best of your ability. So I, 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 I guess that's where I'm coming, where I, my thought is going right now is that maybe our brains tend to sort of totalize. So there can be this idea of like, well, it's just sort of simple, right? Self-sacrifice. So if I want to sort of do, if I want to sort of maybe carve some of that space, like the space you're talking about for my own sort of processing of my own emotions or uh, maybe some creative thing I want to do, like that would be not self-sacrificing, right? <laughs> but somehow right. what, what's interesting is that you're, you're, you're um, there's, a there's a point at which there's a bothness within everything. Like really quick, there was somebody who, um, that I know in the philosophy circles who shared a story about his mother being a ballerina and how she gave that up because her, her husband basically made her give it up, you know, to be um, a wife and a mother. And um, it made me think about like, you know, um, uh, Hannah, who we, you know, both like know about through Instagram, where she's like, she's still a ballerina, but she's a mother to eight children. And obviously she's not gonna be able to be doing performances in like Swan Lake and all of that right now, because she also runs a farm and has a house and, um, and all yes. that. But she also has a lot, you know, she has health as well. Um, but what I mean to say is like, she didn't give up her fire for that. It just maybe looks like a different way. But it seemed like in the story of this, this um, gentleman in the philosophy circles, his mom felt like she had to live it, give it up completely. And it, this, this was quite destructive to her. Like, you know, she became an alcoholic and she really, you know, she was present as a mother in a way, but she kind of wasn't in another way because she like left that behind entirely, you know, um, mm -hmm. Now, it, that there would also be a problem, though, if, if a mother has children and then she just sort of, like, doesn't even care for them and just goes off and pursues her dreams without any sense of, like, providing for what would be the in place of, the, like, her presence or maybe, like, the fact that she's becoming some famous person, but, you know, she, her, her kids don't even know who she is. Like, they never even see her, right? Like, that wouldn't be, right. that wouldn't be great either. So it's just, I guess I'm just saying, like, there's something really interesting about the, the may, maybe a mother finds herself in a position of having to do things in new ways to not lose the the fires, the fire that she has for certain things, right? The passions she has for things that are that maybe she can find ways to integrate it into having children and having like having a home and, and showing that sort of spark and joy that she has for those things that demonstrate that to children, right? So they say, wow, like mom really lights up about this, that or the other. And that's so cool. Like it makes it's a it's a way to provide to them as well in showing them that, wow, that's something that, you know, again, like I said, lights lights my my mother up or she really like loves that and that's so cool and you know just like we feel so excited when our kids are excited about something we're like oh that's so cool they really love this thing or they're really into this book right now like we're excited that they're into something and really lo like loving something of their own accord you know so that was a whole lot sandy but um i will say like i don't think it, it's not very it's not self-evident how to hold this balance of being self-sacrificing or selfless but not becoming selfish in a strange way by never become being self-forgetful in Daniel's terminology like he'll talk a lot about self-forgetfulness but the thing is that um and I think it's a really great concept and a great uh, a great understanding um to be oriented to self in that manner but there's also a way in which that means you have to have some sense of self to allow for like the flow which means you're not really it's like the person who's doing the the, the music right like they're so in a state of flow in their improvisation that they're not thinking about the fact that they're doing it, but they still have to cultivate the skill and take the time to give themselves the ability to like practice that enough that they can be in a flow state. Does, does that make any sense? So it's just, I don't know. I think, I think the mother does find herself in that balance of, of knowing how to do um, this whole realm of like, you, you know, to be selfless, you still have to have a self there <laughs> by which to give to the others right. the, and the others around yes. you. And, and I think it's a, it's it's very um, interesting wordplay because you know in in the moment of being selfless there is less of self but there is still some self left that needs to be addressed and acknowledged 
Yeah. But I, I feel like with motherhood, there's this sense of totality. And, you know, you touched upon it a little bit when you were talking earlier, like the sense of to totality where everything has to be absolute, where everything has to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. I think often when we are embracing motherhood or in, the, in, in, our, in our vocation as mothers, we forget to acknowledge the nuances and, mm -hmm. you know, seek balance in our day-to-day -day life. Because, you know, there is so much the sense of guilt and shame yeah. and being absolutely great at being a mother is something that every mom aspires to do because, you know, it's like, it's what, it's what happens. That's what happens with becoming a mother. You just want to be the best at everything. Mm -hmm. And it can be really hard on, on you. But, but I, I also think there are external influences that, you know, play a role in this because if we think about ourselves before marriage and motherhood, we are easily as humans okay to maybe binge watch telly or <laughs> just, you know, munch on some snacks. And maybe we were not into fitness as much as we should have been because we had all the time in the world and the liberty to pursue it, Yeah. for example. But from the moment some mothers or some people think that, okay, I really need to have a sense of self so what I'm trying to say here is sometimes one can confuse themselves by saying that, you know, having to do things that are social is a way of holding on to self when you might have not had a sense of self to begin with. Mm -hmm. Like whether it's, you know, being overly, co you know, conscientious about the way you look post-pregnancy when pre-pregnancy you did not probably care much or didn't engage in as much outdoor activities or physical activities mm -hmm. and not that anything is wrong with that my point here is that you try so hard to remember that you still have a sense of autonomy over your life without the dependency of having children you know because yes you have this sort of you know, these precious lives or life that is depending and counting on you. Yeah. So your way of seeking identity sometimes can be very depressing because you associate it with, you know, whether it's your profession, your hobby, some kind of social activity that involves, you know, being outdoors, pursuing activities a particular day, going out, different things. But I think... You know, as humans, we also tend to create problems where problems do not exist. <laughs> and I, I and I think in some ways, not that I'm trying to say that the loss is not real and it's not there. The transition is immense, but that there is that element of, you know, of you not being fully present. I think you and I were, were talking about time at one point and mm -hmm. we said that children don't really have a sense of time. I think that's because they are fully present and immersed yeah. in their current circumstances. If they're playing with Legos, even if it's lunchtime and you made this <laughs> delicious sandwich, they're like, I'm actually not hungry because right now I'm fully present with my Legos. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't understand the routine because I am present in my moment. Right. Right. But as human beings identity is lost because you only think you, you, you had an identity at a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. But what about the now? Now you're a mother. Now you're a wife. So with your circumstances having changed, you have changed. So is loss really there? Did you really lose yeah. something or did you just become something new? I'm yeah. asking a lot of rhetorical questions, but this is like, you know, yeah. my finest work is when I talk to you, as I always say. <laughs> and I have been meditating on this and I'm like, is there a loss? There is no loss. I mean, I can't compare myself to single Sandy because I'm not single anymore. Yeah. So how, yeah. how is something lost when it no longer exists? That part of me was hmm. a phase of my life. That was a period of my life. Like we have with our children, you know, we have the newborns, the infants, the toddlers, you know, and the teenagers and all those are faces, but that does not mean identity is lost. Identity evolves. Yes. So it's almost ironic when we talk about identity, because it can be said that identity is truly never lost because it's constantly being found. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. I think that's really well said, Sandy. I love that. And that, yeah, that's exactly what I was um, kind of getting at a little bit. I hit that at, at it with this idea that I was listening when I was listening to Aspasia, Daniel and um, Johannes, where 
there's this idea that, you know, it, how do you, you know, it's like the sense of, okay, the true self or my true identity. Like there's something about th- these things that are, that we are programmed with. Like I said, these kind of propensities, right? Why does somebody like chocolate versus vanilla? Like what, why, why did they, why is that like their favorite ice cream flavor? I don't know. Maybe it's a memory with their grandma or maybe it's just the way that they were designed. Right. But there's this, I think there is this kind of, I think it is really important that we, that we acknowledge what you just said about identity, identity being constantly found, because I do think this is kind of um, uh, a hindrance for many people where, they want to feel like their true self again or something like this. And it's like, um, you might really kind of um, find yourself rather frustrated or disappointed, or I want to say um, aggravated in that state because, you know, good luck. Like in a way it doesn't exist anymore. Right. Like you said, right. It's, yeah. It's, it doesn't exist anymore. And and as you exist now, it is different. And so when people say you're different or you've changed, yeah. I mean, that's kind of the, that's kind of the point of life in many regards is that we, that's why we're human beings and we need yeah. to try and be in our present, you know, yes. yeah. and that could be a very different circumstance. But I, I, you know, having said that I do, I mean, we have to acknowledge that there are very psychological and mental tribulations that come mm-hmm. with, with motherhood and that yeah. stress and all of those things are valid but I feel like a lot of unnecessary resentment and mm-hmm. rage and isolation can be avoided because I feel like most of those things are self-inflicted mm-hmm. that's a, to a large that's extent really point. it's very it's very um you know straightforward in the sense that it's, yeah. it's acknowledging that you know a lot of those problems just come from like something that a person hasn't cultivated within themselves you know Mm -hmm. like I want to relate this a little bit to the whole selfless point because you know maybe um in a sense like the 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 person who maybe feels like they were always able to make decisions relatively easy like they it's yeah like they they maybe weren't the most like amazing um you know they wouldn't maybe think of themselves as like super decisive but they they didn't have too much problem making plans or making decisions now that they have children maybe they find that to be more difficult or more challenging and it's really important not to blame motherhood right or blame um like to me that's that's very problem or blame your husband or blame anyone else right like stop doing right that. like you have to re- realize like it's you it's you having to now up your game on learning how to decide when you have real stakes or you have real responsibilities and that's what it means to be an adult you know it's like that's what it means yes. to be an adult is that you now you have to, yes of course it's going to be hard, quote unquote harder to make decisions because it's not just your life it's 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 multiple people's lives that it can impact. So, but it, it never the less means that you you have something. It's it's actually a great opportunity to grow and like to get better and then to improve in that area. But it, like you said, it's it's really it's self inflicted to say to kind of stay stuck in that place of of um, blame and and not and and sort of thinking about like um, you know I I mean I do think there that isolation that people feel can. You know, certainly there are there are environmental factors for that, but but on the whole, yes. there are many 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 things that can help with that. But it takes that recognition of like, wait, I could, there are things I could maybe ask for or do that would would help alleviate this. Uh, but am I am I you know vulnerable enough to do that? Am I willing to be sort of step up and do that when I've never had to necessarily do that before? You know, um, and I yes, so I that, that's. Like, that's- yeah. That's what I meant when I said that there is a sense of totality because I feel like a lot of, a lot of the problems that women and mothers encounter is sometimes because of the sense of totality, like, yes, can I ask for help? Can yes. I acknowledge it? Like, am I willing to have the hard conversations instead of being quiet and resentful and bitter because mm-hmm. I supposedly expect, you know, my my world and my family to understand this when clearly I'm having no no but I have exactly and I I have not come into terms with accepting this Mm -hmm. and acknowledging it to be real enough to voice it out you know to actually speak truth to power yeah yeah because the dynamic is constantly changing but that kind of like you know I can easily hear somebody being like but but aren't I to be how can I even ask for help? Exactly. Like, that's not being very. That's not being very selfless. You know, like what would you say to that, Sandy? It yes. seems like such a basic. You know, yes. Exactly. No, but 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 that's the th- but but the thing is, there is one thing between. That's why I said it's self-inflicted because there is a sense of self. <laughs> it's just there is less of self in the end in 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 the need of becoming selfless. Ironically, because you know, if if someone is thriving and able to have a method to the madness then oh but she gets a lot of help you know it's almost belittled because there is the sense of 
superiority if you're able to do it all by yourself. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. even talk, yeah. I mean, stepping out of the topic of identity, like mothers are under a lot of pressure, you you know, and every mother is different, like I said, and so is every child. But, right. you know, society and social media, like, oh, you're only supposed to breastfeed. You know, it's completely bad. But what about the mothers that cannot? There are children that thrive on formula. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, and there are there are women that you know are unable to lactate so what are they going to do starve their children or like think they're not good enough mothers that's not true like you know and there are there is this need to like make sure that children have like three home cooked meals and they all have to be organic some people don't have access to that some people can't afford to be full-time mothers they have to work so they have to be working mothers they have to seek help and you know have daycare and childcare like there is so so many different narratives and everyone's life is so very different and everyone's just trying to do the best they can yeah yeah but a lot of women going into motherhood and embracing it we're constantly comparing ourselves because of social media because we have access to people's lives now it's so transparent it's so out there like for example you know you mentioned hannah from the ballerina farm versus this person whose mother gave up her career and lost herself and was resentful Mm -hmm. like you know it's about finding balance and Mm -hmm. knowing that it's okay to do things differently and different things work for different family dynamics different things work for different marriages and different couples right but having said that i am no less of a good mother because i asked for help because i said i cannot do something because I said I can't do something it's okay (laughs) to not be able to do that because I think we are so we 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 try so hard to you know master being a mother that we forget that we're only humans you know we we, we try and it's ironic because we are in this phase of being completely graceful to our children where we try and not yell at them or you know discipline them in a harsh way because we we keep telling ourselves they're children they're learning yeah but yeah. so are we, even though we're adults. <laughs> but yeah, we don't yeah. extend the same grace towards ourselves. It, yeah. It's so ironic because we are so aware, so highly, you know, conscientious and alert. Our senses are heightened. We're overstimulated. We have all those senses as a mother or as a new mother. Mm-hmm. Yet there is so much lack of awareness towards self. Again, like I said, it's because, mm-hmm. of, you know, we lack being present with our presence. Hmm. Hmm. even though we're fully present in our children's lives around yeah. the clock and that's yeah no uh, you see the you irony said, is you said it's, it's so beautifully so again. drastic yeah no it's, it's because these are like revelations i'm having now this is like what i'm like coming yeah. this is like the ep- epiphany you know epiphanies that i have while i fold laundry <laughs> and i'm like golly gosh i have been self-inflicting unnecessarily when i already do have challenges that i have to go through but yeah. some of these things could be avoided should I have that mental jargon, yeah. like, you know, just kind of detangle in my head. Yeah. Well, I think, I think that's, you know, go, go, yeah, no, that was also good, Sandy. And I think, I think this idea too of, of, again, the selfless, you know, being selfless and, and, and all of this, how, how I'm thinking about it in terms of, you know, again, to that point where I'm like, well, I, I, if I'm going to really be selfless, I'm not going to ask for help, right? But there's a self, there's a, there's a strange self-importance that slips in there, right? Like you're saying, like, we forget that we're mere humans. So it's, mm-hmm. it's strange, but actually in the inability to articulate, hey, this is, you know, these are the things that I'm, I'm, and, and like with a trusted partner, husband, you know, like, you're not just going to tell this to anybody, because I, I do think it's important to be discerning about who you, you just sort of are, you don't just start complaining about things, but it is important to be honest with especially with those in your life that are your, your support, right? That you, that's, that's who you can talk to about how you're really feeling, what, what you're thinking right. about. And just sort of, it, it's, it's not like, um, meant as a, it's really meant to be like a, Hey, let's, let's get creative here because this, this right here is, is, is for whatever reason is, um, you know, maybe I, I'd like to see, I'd like to change things or try something different because I'm, I'm hitting a rut with this or this routine's not quite working. Um, so let's try something different. Um, or could we consider this? But I, I do think there's something very strange about how, how it really takes like, I mean, in a way it really takes retraining the mind to say like, Absolutely. it's in a sense self, selflessness again, is not like, 
it's it, in a way you're going to think about yourself more if you don't ask, because you're going to be, like you said, there's always the potential there, unfortunately, for feeling bitter or resentful, right? Or saying, oh, and I it's wish, easier to I feel that way. Would know that. Well, that's really yes. selfish, actually, because you're kind yes. of assuming people can just know what you're thinking without thinking about it. like as if you're some deity that they should be able to hear from the, the spirit of you just emanating out. Well, okay, you're not, you're not that you're a human. So, right. so it's weird exactly. that selflessness can become like selfishness very quickly when we're not, like you said, doing this detangling of our thoughts and our narratives that we tell ourselves, like where, where we have right. to really get honest with what does it really mean to be selfless? And like you said, the self still has to be there for it to be given to others. So, you know, it has, you really still have to maintain that. Otherwise you're doing this ironic thing of being able to be very present with everyone but yourself, like you said. And, and even though you're being present and you're being nurturing and doing all those things, you are somehow building this inner resentment over what you assume was communicated, but it was actually a dialogue in your head. <laughs> and well, it's so yeah, easy. Exactly. The it's so in easy head. for that to happen. It's so easy <laughs> for it to happen because, you know, we somehow expect that, you know, we assume that our expectations that are purely internal have been communicated. Right. And that's the same as like people scrolling on Instagram and like, you know, oh, yes. feel, feeling so resonant with all of the posts about like, oh, don't feel mom guilt or these are these things like, you know, those pictorial things they'll have. And it's like, yeah, but you know, did you, did you do anything about it? Or did you just sort of like, you right. know, like all those posts or like think, think, oh yeah, that like, that that's totally, I can relate to that, but you didn't really do anything about it. Like, it's not enough to just right. sit there and stare at it and sort of think, okay, this might be something that I should acknowledge, but then not do, actually doing it. You know, and like, and like the whole dynamic between man and wife, it changes drastically when you embrace parenthood. Yeah. Because there is a third. And then obviously, if you go on to having more children, you, you're constantly trying to figure out a dynamic at home. Like, how do you make time for each other? How do you make time, you know, for more than one child? How do you go from being you know, from what, from one child to two, two to four, whatever it is, mm -hmm. there is a constant shift. And then there is a shift between the different ages that they're at and different phases of their oh. lives. Oh, yeah. But between all of those, I think you and I have bonded over our love for conversation oh, and yeah. having been able to talk about anything under the sun for hours. Oh yeah. And, but I also feel like I've always advocated for having the difficult conversations because I yeah. think it's so necessary. Yeah. As it's, so women, not, it's so easy to not. It's so easy to not. Right? Yes, yeah. it's so easy to, yeah. to not. And you know, it's. I mean, when you talk about a mother versus a father, a mother is you know completely nurturing and very alert <laughs> to the cries of a child in the middle of the night, yeah. compared to a father waking up instantly. But they are aware of any you know, predatorial sounds like, you know, the rustling of leaves because mm -hmm. they have this defense protective mechanism. Like that's their role. That's where yes. their instincts kick in because they want to protect right. as the man and the father and the husband and the woman want to nurture and, you know, keep everything breathing alive, essentially. <laughs> so yeah. in that way, I think it's completely funny that we expect our partners, the fathers, the husbands to understand our our emotions truly as a woman because one they're not women secondly our bodies our anatomy our psychology is not entirely the same even though yes we are parents to the same child yes thirdly i think it's unfair it's like expecting a french person to understand spanish which is very unlikely <laughs> you know because yeah. it's different it's two different you know, uh, roles. We play two different roles. That's why yeah. it's maternal and paternal. That's why, the, you know, you have both. So yeah. I think the importance of, you know, self-awareness, acknowledging the problem and, mm -hmm. you know, sort of being able to find the courage to start a conversation yeah. about it is so necessary. It's yeah. ironic and, you know, it's like easier said than done. Absolutely. But I feel like you know, it's easy to neglect your emotions and yourself and how you feel when you have children because so much time passes with children, yeah. you know, between feeding and school and swimming and classes and ballet, <laughs> all of those things. There's always something for the mother to do. But in the end of the day, when the kids have gone to bed or when, you know, your nests are empty, you don't want to be this bitter, resentful person who thinks they lost a part of themselves. Mm -hmm because of this beautiful thing that they embraced, which was motherhood. 
which we talked about, you know, the sense of blame and guilt and shame, all these negative connotations that come with it. And yes, there is, you know, more clinical, psychological, um, stressful effects that come into play. You know, I acknowledge those too, but I, I feel like it can be very easy for us to ruminate and self-inflict and have those dialogues in our head and hold our husbands, our partners, um, accountable for something they truly aren't because you've only spoken to them in your head and you've told you've heard them say what you're assuming they will say and somehow even at that you've not done a better job because you've gone and done the opposite instead of telling yourself what you wanted to hear even in your head you didn't shape the narrative so at yeah. least try out the real thing you know yeah and, yeah, and, I, and I think too like it can be like you said it's um it's it's easier to do a lot of things in our head than actually doing them but but it, it is so it is so rewarding when you do like it, it's and and that's the thing it's so it's exciting in that sense because even if if one hasn't necessarily maybe been brave enough or vulnerable enough or courageous enough to do that because you know all sorts of reasons right what if the person doesn't understand me what if they aren't on the same page and they think I'm asking too much or what whatever it is right like right it's, it, it's it's still an opportunity to get vulnerable again you you know great you you have another chance to do that like thank god you have a, another day on this earth to like actually talk uh and to work know, on it yeah to, yes. to work on it and it's a lifelong it's a lifelong thing I mean I think that's the beauty though it's like in relationships they uh they they always have this potential to be even more like more deeply intimate more more like um um, thriving in that way it's like that's so cool like isn't that that's such a cool thing and so I think I think sometimes there's there's a but there's a there's so much fear in well I don't want to upset the the fruit basket or I don't want to it's going good so I don't want to like make it exactly so, you know there's so much fear around and, that but that's, that's and, exactly and, what oh my see, goodness you know that's a good point because I feel like a lot of people go into like autopilot mode in, mm -hmm. in, in the name of routine Hmm. But mm -hmm. a routine is supposed to give you quality time, you know, it's not quantitative, like, yeah. it does not matter if you are able to put your children down at 6pm, but there is a sense of isolation after they've gone to bed, you sit and mm -hmm. think, oh, what do I do with myself now? Because oh, you've I not work worked on addressing your, you know, your issues or your sense mm -hmm. of self from time to time. Well, I think, I think that's such, oh, I'm so glad you brought up that point because I was actually, when I listened to this talk with Daniel Johannes de Aspicia, they had talked, um, Daniel had mentioned the past, I think it's Pascal quote where it's like, you know, the most of the pro world's problems are because people can't sit in a room alone with themselves for three minutes, you know? And so I was yes. thinking about this quote and this is, this is very true because this has to do with what you said about, you know, being able to be fully present to everybody else, everyone else, but yourself right there. So this, this yes. ability to sit with yourself for just three minutes, even just that is really, really important. Um, but what, for me, I start to think, start to think to myself, well, does that mean you should always just be okay like if you're feeling alone is that you not doing what like are you not being the the person who's able to cultivate solitude or is it because you're wired for connection and so you should actually be like something that would attend to yourself is to say to speak more openly or candidly about absolutely that. you know because so we're mammals we're mammals <laughs> we are supposed to you know seek contact and connection and and the beauty of conversation and quality time this is what i meant that sometimes we go into autopilot mm. or you know the mm -hmm. sense of routine can be isolating mm. because you know you attend to a certain number of chores and put your children to bed i'm, I'm you know i'm giving these examples because we're talking about motherhood and identity yeah. and i feel like in the end of the day are you sort of able to sit down with your partner and address the difficulties without being in competition about who's more tired? Because we're comparing, <laughs> you know, because because you're having this yeah. one conversation finally when you can hear each other and <laughs> the room is quiet, but you end up getting into an unnecessary bickering because yeah. yeah. there is a sense of pride about who is tired <laughs> oh or more God. tired. And, and bear in mind, like, it's completely valid to be offended because you are exhausted in different ways. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and that, that, that rage is valid, but I feel like that is no way to live if yeah. you are constantly getting into tips because your unconditional love for each other, you know, brought you to procreate and make more of you two. 
but that should not lead you to you know have this sense of resentment and anger and mm -hmm. bitterness and be in competition about who's doing more who's more tired mm -hmm. because it's easy to do that it's yeah. easy to it's easy to reflect and mm -hmm. meditate on negative feelings negative yeah. experiences negative moments negative times of the day of the day like it's so easy to like focus and ruminate about those things than the positives yeah yeah. And it's very easy and it can happen very instantly and it's it's very painful, it's very hard. It's 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 and then you go on to further ruminating mm -hmm. because you know this happened and you're in in a tiff which I feel can be avoided if you come together and acknowledge that your feelings are as valid as mine. Yeah. That sense of acknowledgement is so important. Yeah. I do. Yeah, it's so funny. It's right. so funny because as children, as mm -hmm. mothers, we constantly praise our children, say, you did a great job. Well done. I'm <laughs> proud of you. But do you tell yourself that? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a rhetorical question, by the way. It was rhetorical. I'm not telling <laughs> you no, Michelle. No, I'm not. But But I'm just saying... And it's yeah, so yeah. ironic in shaping yeah. our children's identity. We lose so much of ourselves purely because we forget to acknowledge ourselves, not because yeah. ourselves don't exist. Because yeah. we're still here. We still, we're still valid, right. you know, and it's not going to change. It, it does not end. It only merely changes. Hmm. Mm -hmm. But we don't acknowledge it. And that way we, we mourn an unnecessary death when it's actually a rebirth yeah it's a rebirth and it's perspective yeah. and life is perspective purely you can be miserable or happy purely based on perspective and it's yeah. the narrative you tell yourself yeah and i think i think yeah no that's also good and i and you know they people they, there's kind of like in in the language of of many many years where there's like this sense that there's a motherly intuition right like there's a motherly intuition i think that the mother has to also listen to for herself it's for the children it's for the, the home, right? But it's also for herself. Because I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, maybe a person feels like, well, for me, being all in on, you know, um, motherhood, it looks like I'm not, you know, I'm, it, it, you can't really prove it to anybody else. Like, you really have to go back to your own self, you know? And where do you feel are, are the areas you're, you might have some sort of need? And then are you making sure to not just ignore that constantly, right? <laughs> like, um, because that's really going to be, I think, what gives a person a sense of, uh, direction with that right instead of just staying in the in the feelings of it or of the or of the ignoring of it or of of or of making a problem where there is no problem right because like you said we do that as humans very easily too so you know it's it's just that I think that um I'm thinking about somebody trying to navigate um this this idea of of okay well how do I how do I do that right like how do I do this thing where I'm I'm being fully selfless for my children but also not I'm also still acknowledging myself and I don't know if it just comes to being very aware of becoming more aware of yourself and what practices might help you to sort of allow yourself to do a check-in with yourself <laughs> because if you don't have, like I don't know I'm just trying to think of certain things like whether it is just going to the gym regularly or journaling or or a combination of, of both I mean it doesn't have to just be one thing but you know what I mean to say is like slowing down enough to to hear what what are the things that help you to be um, even, you know, like you talked about we, wanting to be a good mother, because it, yes. it's like, it, it matters that, you know, it matters to do like, you want to do that well for them, because it influences their lives. But the thing is to like, which it influences their lives, no and ifs or buts. Um, the thing is, is that, though, there's something about the ability to care for yourself, like, okay, this is a very much more concrete thing. If, if you're I, what I often think about is like, if, if your children or your child is having a hard time, listening right as they get older it's like are you even listening to yourself <laughs> like right. are you listening to yourself like is there yes that you exactly and you just didn't even you you didn't pay attention to it because you know you didn't think it mattered or you you feel like you already tried or or you know or you're like well that's I'm, I, that's that's not really as important as all these other things right um <laughs> so yes like you can't you can't regulate your children's emotions if you are still unable to regulate your own and yes, that's why right. a lot of people adults seek therapy yeah because you can't have those hard conversations with your partners or yourselves so you need to be mediated and be asked specific questions where you know it's being said out aloud where you mm -hmm. are actually being talked to as an adult because right. sometimes you forget to do that with yourself right right no the so irony sad. is 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 so marveling you know the the <laughs> irony is just incredible in motherhood and 
all this comes to me as I fold a pile of laundry and I'm like, oh my goodness. Wow. (laughs) We are truly fascinating beings. We are. So to make that irony, not like an effacing one, right? But rather like to sublate that irony because we are ironic as human beings, right? It Maybe there's this way in which we find ironically to be selfless is also to cultivate the self so that we can be selfless in a way that actually offers something, not just our, you know, what we think is everything, but it's the bare minimum because we haven't acknowledged our humanness or something like that, you know? Um, Yes. And I, I, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's important because there's, there's a way in which there are these ironies we see, but we can either have them be like these um, negating and an effacing way type of ironies, or the ironies where we say, wow, that's sort of um, ironic. And therefore my brain doesn't tend to say, T- does not t- tend to accept that necessarily, but it is still nevertheless true and important to acknowledge and embrace so that you, you know, kind of are more in touch with the reality of the irony of the situation, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it's truly fascinating. Yes. The irony, irony is lost on a lot of us. It really <laughs> is. Right. But it's exactly the, the source of like, um, of great insight. And I think potential f- uh, positive change in our lives when we acknowledge that irony, right? Yes, and I'm so glad that we get to talk about this, Michelle. Thank you for me allowing too. me to speak my lonely thoughts that I have as I fold a pile of laundry <laughs> aloud and perhaps share it. And, you know, another listener will probably be able to relate to our conversation. Oh, absolutely. It's it's a joy, Sandy. And, and I, I deeply uh, appreciate the space to be able to have with you to, to let, our, let our thoughts come out and, and um, kind of combine and, and mix together. It's, it's a lovely time. And it's, it's always, um, it, always insightful and always, you know, in a very good way, inspiring for me, girly. So thank you so much. And I, I look forward to having you again on the OG Rose Spotify podcast. Um, it's, it's always a pleasure, my girly. Thank you so much, Michelle. As always, I enjoy the tremendous work that OG Rose, you and Daniel do every day. And I try to keep up as much as I can. So thank you for having me again. Oh, girly, you're doing All wonderful, right. incredible things as well. And I'm so grateful for thank you. you. I'm so still going to encourage you to write a book, that book one day. We one day, one day. We will, we will be doing it. We will. Hopefully with more wisdom. That's right. With exactly. age. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. Have a nice day. Yes, you too, girly. Bye-bye, Sandy. Bye-bye. Bye.